When I first saw this game on Steam, I was immediately drawn in by its art style. Upon clicking to find out more about the title, however, my interest was cemented. The game was about a writer facing writer's block, a subject very dear to my heart, as I have been struggling with the same issue for years now. After playing the game, I can safely say my interest was not misplaced, but there are some caveats to this statement. Let's start at the beginning, though. Forgotten Fields is a narrative-driven experience that delivers a relatable and thought-provoking story via its gorgeous-looking packaging. In it, you play a Sid, a writer with one book under his belt and looking to add another. However, he has one major issue, a severe case of writer's block. To complicate matters further, it is the last day to apply to a really important writing grant, which is rather hard to do when you can't really sit down and write the required story. While he struggles with this problem, his friend drops by and passes along a message from Sid's mom, who wants to have one final dinner with Sid and his friends before selling the house the very next day. Despite being reluctant to go due to his deadline, the protagonist decides to go anyway, embarking on a nostalgic adventure home. Themes such as creativity, nostalgia and change are central to the tale and work together to create a very cozy and heartwarming narrative. The story and writing are not spectacular, and there were a couple of moments that felt like the developer was trying too hard to be profound, but all in all I did enjoy them quite a bit. I think the main reason for that was just how relatable everything was. I saw myself in many of Sid's struggles, fears and hopes, and I suspect many people who try to exercise their creativity will too. This extends right down to the very details. In the beginning of the game, for example, you can interact with a bookshelf, which prompts Sid to say that he doesn't read as much as he used to that maybe this is the cause of his inability to write, which is a thought I often find myself have. I know I've spent a while talking about the game's story and writing, but it's because it's the aspect that has honestly impressed me the most. This game was made by a one-man studio, which I think served in the storyline's favor. I might be wrong, but to me, it felt as though these were all feelings that the developer himself has experienced and masterfully put into his work. It felt raw in the best possible sense of the word, and even the lessons I learned and introspection I experienced while playing the game felt like direct messages from the developer. It's clear just how much heart was put into this game and how close to the developer the theme is. Again, the story and writing are not spectacular, just good but they did resonate a lot with me. However, a game is hardly only made of its story and writing. Thankfully though, two other main aspects of any game work directly in Forgotten Fields' favor. The art style and soundtrack. The game is a delight to see, and it perfectly complemented the theme the game was going for at any given moment. The same can be said for the soundtrack. At one point, for example, we have warm colors of a sunset and the sounds of waves crashing against the beach, giving us the sense of relaxation and feeling that everything would be alright, while Sid himself had a moment of introspection. At another point, the game used blues, whites, purples and yellow colors to convey the feeling of magic and safety in a certain location, with the ambient sound of birds and crickets to further collaborate in the construction of the environment. Speaking of magic, that is also an element present in the game. Well, kinda. In the game you don't actually play as just Sid. You got to, as the Steam page calls it, take part in Sid's creative process and play through a parallel story set in a fantasy world, which is the story Sid is trying to write. This is a very interesting mechanic and way to tell Sid's tale as you can clearly see real-world influences in the story that Sid creates. With the story, you can get a glimpse into Sid's inner thoughts and interpretations of the events happening around him. 
and it is fascinating to witness, becoming both an interesting narrative device and gameplay element. While everything so far has been great, sad gameplay is unfortunately where the game suffers a bit. In the game you walk around and interact with objects, usually from an isometric perspective that allows you to rotate and zoom the camera. There are some deviations from this, such as segments in which you play in first person, but those are unfortunately not very common. While the game is very dialogue heavy, with plenty of reading to be had, the game does a good job of breaking it up with the occasional minigame. One, for example, has you helping people push a boat into the sea, while another has you finding clothes around the field. Despite the occasional quick time event, these minigames are not hard at all. That is, unless you're fighting the very janky controls. The main reason why I claim the gameplay is where the game suffers a bit is precisely related to how the game controls. Most of the time it controls okay. Until it doesn't. There were a few sections in the game that genuinely made me frustrated, as I wasn't able to properly do what the game wanted me to. The main offender here was the rock throwing minigame. For some reason I could never get it to throw properly, instead either barely moving the rock from the ground or just yeeting it off camera, with no middle ground. Other parts had me laughing with how silly they looked, such as the bit when I tried to walk on rocks and randomly fell when I was barely a step up from the next rock. Like I said, most of the time it's manageable, but when it's rough, it's rough. Another issue that needs to be mentioned is that the game is unfortunately quite glitchy. Most are minor graphical glitches, such as the terrain clipping into each other or your character running in the air, but you can find some more annoying glitches here and there. The main one that I found literally took away my ability to move. The character would walk in one direction and stop, and I couldn't do anything. Restarting the game didn't fix the issue, and I didn't want to lose my progress by reloading an early save, so... I wasn't quite a predicament. Fortunately, after quite a few minutes struggling, I managed to fix the issue by... Opening the change clothes menu. I wish I was kidding. As for the technical stuff and product information, the game ran fine on my system, which has its specs listed in the description. The game clocks in at around two and a half hours and costs 13 US dollars. The game has also been bundled and has had a 70% discount in the past. So, with that said, if what you heard here and seen in the video sounds interesting, I do recommend you pick up the game. It's a good one. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, please consider liking and subscribing if you enjoyed the review and uh, I'll see you on the next one. Bye!